Hello and welcome to the AFib Insight Experience. My name is Dr. David Garcia. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Internal Medicine, Division of Hematology Oncology at the University of New Mexico Health Sciences Center. I specialize in treating patients who have a heart condition called atrial fibrillation. For those of you who are just now learning about atrial fibrillation or AFib, here are a few insights on the condition for you to consider. AFib is an irregular, sustained heartbeat that affects 2.3 million Americans, with a prevalence expected to increase to 5.6 million by the year 2050. The risk of developing AFib increases with age. People older than 40 years have a one in four risk of developing it in their lifetime. AFib patients are at an increased risk for stroke because blood may not be properly pumped out of the heart, which may cause it to pool and form a clot. This clot can travel to the brain and cause a stroke. People with AFib are at nearly five times greater risk of suffering a stroke, and AFib-related strokes are nearly twice as likely to be fatal and twice as disabling as non-AFib-related strokes. Given the impact on a patient's and their family's lives, it's critical to understand and educate others on AFib and its relationship to stroke as part of overall heart health. We hope you'll enjoy AFib Insight, an educational experience created by Team AFib, a group of leading advocacy groups whose mission is to raise awareness of the consequences of AFib and the link between AFib and stroke. AFib Insight is sponsored by Beringer Ingelheim Pharmaceuticals Incorporated. Please share your AFib insights with others and thank you for watching. AFib is a rapid or irregular heartbeat. You might think of it as a quivering of the upper chambers of the heart. These chambers are called the atria. When your heart is working normally, it contracts and pumps blood to the rest of the body in a regular pattern. This pattern is controlled by electrical signals to your heart. When you have AFib, your heart makes disorganized signals. This causes your atria to beat too fast and irregularly preventing blood from being pumped out to your ventricles or the lower chambers of your heart. Symptoms of AFib include weakness, fatigue, dizziness, fainting spells, or shortness of breath. Many patients describe feeling as if they've experienced skipped heartbeats, erratic heartbeats, fluttering or butterflies in their chest. But some people experience no symptoms at all. Even these patients are still at risk for stroke. Let's stop and take a short quiz. True or false, atrial fibrillation is an irregular heartbeat of the upper chambers of the heart. Look left to select true, look right to select false. That's correct. Atrial fibrillation is an irregular heartbeat of the upper chambers of the heart. That's incorrect. Atrial fibrillation is an irregular heartbeat of the upper chambers of the heart. True or false? Estimates project that the number of Americans affected by AFib will more than double by the year 2050. That's right. AFib currently affects about 2.3 million Americans, but we expect the prevalence to increase to 5.6 million by the year 2050. That's incorrect. The prevalence of AFib is expected to more than double and reach 5.6 million by the year 2050. In fact, the risk of developing AFib increases with age. People older than 40 years have a one in four risk of developing it in their lifetime. In itself, AFib is generally not life-threatening, but it can lead to serious medical complications. Perhaps the most important such complication is stroke. Nearly one in every six strokes is caused by atrial fibrillation. In fact, people with AFib are at nearly five times greater risk of suffering a stroke than those without this condition. A stroke occurs when the flow of blood to part of your brain is significantly reduced or blocked, resulting in the death of brain cells, which can lead to permanent damage or even death. The most common cause of stroke is a blood clot, a solid mass of blood that clumps together and blocks flow through an artery in or leading to your brain. 
Stroke risk increases in AFib patients because blood may not be pumped properly out of the atria to the ventricles or the lower chambers of the heart. When the heart can't pump blood effectively, the blood can pool in the heart and potentially form a blood clot. The blood clot can then travel to your brain. If this happens, it blocks blood flow to part of the brain tissue, causing a stroke. Within minutes, brain cells begin to die, which can lead to permanent damage, severe disability, and even death. Consequences of stroke may include paralysis on one side of the body, speech and language problems, memory loss, and vision problems. Let's stop and take a short quiz. True or false? You can always feel symptoms when you have AFib. That's actually incorrect. Some people may feel symptoms such as palpitations and fatigue, but others may feel no symptoms at all. That's correct. Some people may feel symptoms such as palpitations or fatigue, whereas others may feel no symptoms at all. True or false? A stroke occurs when the flow of blood to part of your brain is significantly reduced or blocked. That's correct. A stroke does occur when the flow of blood to part of your brain is significantly reduced or blocked. That's incorrect. A stroke occurs when the blood flow to part of your brain is significantly reduced or blocked. A healthcare professional may prescribe medications to help prevent clots from forming, thereby reducing the risk for stroke. These include anticoagulants, medications that work by reducing your blood's ability to form clots by interfering with the process of clot formation. Antiplatelets, these work by reducing the ability of your blood platelets to stick together to form a clot. Let's stop to take this short quiz. True or false? There are no medications available to reduce the risk of stroke in people with AFib. Look left to select true, look right to select false. That's incorrect. There are medications available to reduce the risk of stroke in patients with AFib. That's correct. There are medications available to reduce the risk of stroke in patients with AFib. We hope you've gained insight about AFib and its relation to stroke. Do you know if you have AFib? Do you know your risk for stroke? For these additional insights, complete the screener at this booth or online at www.teamafib.com. And please, if you or someone you know is at risk for AFib, have a conversation with your health care provider. If you've been diagnosed with AFib, don't wait. Talk to your health care provider about how to help reduce your stroke risk today. Only you and your health care provider can determine the treatment plan that's right for you. Stay tuned for a few final questions. How informative did you find this AFib Insight experience? One, not informative at all. Two, informative. Or three, very informative. How knowledgeable were you about AFib before using this experience? One, not at all knowledgeable. Two, knowledgeable. Or three, very knowledgeable. How knowledgeable are you about AFib after using this experience? One, not at all knowledgeable. Two, knowledgeable. Or three, very knowledgeable. Do you feel more comfortable approaching this topic with your healthcare provider? Yes or no?